So we're going to be building a pure CSS tab solution in this video. Uh, you can see it doesn't look great, but that's entirely up to you to start in the way that you want, but it does function exactly like you'd find some kind of JavaScript plugin for tabs. So how is this done with pure CSS? Well, we've actually got radio buttons uh, behind these labels or next to them in our markup. And this allows us to target when a specific radio button is checked. We can use CSS selectors to show the content uh, nearest to it. So in this case, we just have three tabs, but it will obviously work with more and it's obviously easily scalable. You just duplicate the tab and the content. So let's go straight into the code and first of all, look at the markup and then look at how we make this functional. So we're just starting out with a basic document. I've got a style sheet within my CSS directory here called tabs.css, nothing in it at the moment. So let's just link this in just so when we do start to style everything up, uh, we've got access to that style sheet and that's being loaded in. So you can either use unordered lists and list items, or you can use divs for this. I'm going to be using unordered lists, but feel free to change this around. So we're going to start to define the uh, actual labels, the radio buttons and the content here. Then we'll start to look at styling them up and then also adding in some functionality. So for the first list item, this is actually going to contain the radio button, the label for the radio button and the content itself. So let's actually give a class to this unordered list just so we can target that in isolation. And inside of here, I'm going to create a input with a type attribute of radio. The name of this is really important because we need all of these radio buttons grouped. So we're going to say tabs. And for this ID, we're going to say tab one. So this is more like a, a group identifier and this is an individual identifier. So you can, you don't have to use tab hyphen and then a number, you can use whatever you want here. Now we're also going to add a label. And this is really important because for means the actual ID that this relates to. So in this case, we'll say tab one. And in here, we would put the text that we want to see on the actual tab uh, at the top of the content. So now comes our tab content. So I'm just going to create a div with a class of tab content. And in here, this can be anything. I'm just going to put a paragraph in there with just some random lorem ipsum. So at the moment, it looks like this. Note when we click the actual label itself, which will eventually become the tab at the top, the radio button checks, and then the content is down here. Now This isn't going to look great as we duplicate it. It's just going to look like a list of what we've just seen. So let's paste another one of these in here, change this to tab two and change this to second. And then let's get rid of this and just generate some more uh, lorem ipsum. And we'll do the same for the third tab as well. As mentioned, you can have as many tabs as you want here. So this is going to be third and let's generate some different lorem ipsum. Okay, so we've now got this. We know that when we click the labels, we can switch between the tabs and this is uh, key to making sure that this works. And the way that this is going to work is when a radio button is checked, we're going to show this content. When a radio button here is checked, we're going to show this content and so on. And we can do this using only CSS, which is really handy. No JavaScript needed. So let's just start to tidy this up a little bit. So the tabs, remember, is the actual unordered list. Because we're using an unordered list, we need to change the style type of the list to none. That's going to get rid of them bullet points there. And unordered lists also come with some default padding and some default margin as well. So we can get rid of them and we're all good to go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to float each list item left. Now this won't have any effect at the moment. It, or it at least won't look like it's having an effect at the moment. And the reason being is that we actually have the uh, uh, div con uh, the content here, uh, which is block level. So it's not allowing these labels here to float up so we can position them at the top. So what we're going to do then is down here, we're going to say tabs, tab content, and we're going to say display none. So now you'll see that these float next to each other. Perfect. So these are going to be our tabs at the top, obviously. And then the content below here is going to be absolutely positioned. So we can just show it down here uh, and uh, make it look nice. 
So let's get rid of them radio buttons because we don't need them. So all we really need to do is say tabs li input and we're going to say display of none. And the reason I'm using this is because uh, we don't want input within the actual tab content to be hidden. If we were to just do this and you happen to have any input elements in your content area, uh, they would be hidden as well. So now we have this. So let's briefly just style up these labels just so uh, they look a little bit nicer. So tabs label, and obviously you can say tabs li label like so. Okay, so we want these to be a display of inline block. And the reason being is that we want them to sit in line, but we want to be able to style them like a block element. So let's give it a border just so we can see how this is uh, looking as we style it. They've now all got borders. And let's add maybe a height to this, maybe of 30 pixels. And that's going to give us the following. But we want the text to obviously sit in the middle of the tab. So I'm just going to use line height of 30 here. We don't need to do it this way, but just very simple. And then we can go ahead and give this some padding. So maybe five pixels on the top and bottom and 20 on the left and the right. So there we go. So these are our tabs. So bear in mind that now when I'm clicking each of these, the radio buttons are actually being selected in the background, but the user doesn't know that. To them, it will just be a normal tab system. Now I'm going to change the cursor to pointer. That just gives the effect that it's actually a link that you can click rather than it being the default cursor, because obviously a label by default doesn't show a cursor that you'd normally get associated with an anchor. And what we're also going to do is just modify the border so that when we come to create our content area, it just sits in there a little bit nicely. Now you'll also notice that we've sort of doubled up on the uh, border here, so it looks a bit thicker. So the first thing we want to do is say border right zero or border right size zero, sorry, width. And we can duplicate this down and say border bottom width as well. So that's going to give us this looks a little bit strange at the moment, but we can actually target this last element with CSS to add the border back onto that. So let's do that down here. So tabs li last child label. So remember tabs each list item, the last list item and the label within that, but not within any of the content. We want to set the border right width to one pixel and that will bring back the border on the right there. So let's have a go now at showing the content when we actually click on one of these elements. So down here then I'm just going to comment just so it's a little bit clear that anything below here is functional. So this will allow us to actually uh, when we have some kind of checked element show something. So let's start with the actual label itself. Let's style the label when a label is clicked. So for this, we want to again say tabs li and input within there. Now we can use the checked pseudo selector and then we can say well, with a plus, which is a preceding element. So an element after this, we want to style it. Uh, so basically this means say when tab two is checked, the next element, which is the label, the styles in here apply to. So we can say something like background color DDD. OK, so when we refresh now and click, you can see that that is looking good. OK, so now let's actually show the tab content when we click on one of them elements. So we do the same again. So tabs, li, and then input within that. When that's checked, we now want to use the tilde or the squiggle, whatever you want to call it. And what this means is that it's any element that precedes it, but within that container. So it, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, this element here, but it means look for something along uh, next to it. So in this case, we want to do something with the tab content element. And what do we want to do with the tab content? Well, obviously we want to display it. Remember we set this to display of none here. Now we want to have a display of block. So when I refresh and hit this, you can see that that shows. When I hit second, that shows. And third, that shows as well. But obviously, this looks a bit messy because what we're not doing is we're not positioning the content in the correct place. It's just automatically sitting under each of the items. Let's go ahead and fix this. 
So for the tab content then, we want a position of absolute. So let's see how this changes things. If I click it, you can see it's looking better than it was a moment ago. But we've still got this problem as it, uh, it's sort of following where the tab left, uh, where the tab is. So to remedy that, we're just going to say left zero. Now this still isn't going to fix the problem because when we click it, you can see it's actually coming outside of the tab container. And this is because the actual tab container itself doesn't have a position of relative. By adding an element, uh, a position absolute, what you're doing is you're saying, well, I can position it now, but it will flow outside of a container if the position of that container is not relative. So now when we see it, it looks a little bit better. It's lining up with this element. So we've now actually got a fully functioning tab system. All we really need to do is make this look a little bit better. Um, and also we want to make sure by the end of the video that we can actually add content underneath it as well. That's really, really important because at the moment, if we head over to our uh, file and add, say, a paragraph, more content, you'll notice that that floats up here. So it's not looking great. So let's get rid of this for now. We'll add that back in in a moment. And let's go ahead and style the tab content up a little bit more. So we want to give this a padding of 20 pixels just so everything sits within it nicely and isn't touching the edges. And we can give this a border of black as well just to test this out. There we go. So that's looking much nicer now. The uh, content is padded and it's lining up with this first tab text nicely because remember we gave this a padding of 20 pixels as well. And what we're going to do now is we're going to give the tab um, content area a fixed height. Now this isn't ideal and there may be some way around this, but for now we're just going to go with a fixed height uh, tab content. And then anything that flows over that 200 pixels, we can just scroll. We can uh, make the user scroll. So we're going to say a height of 200 pixels and we want an overflow Y, so on the Y axis of scroll. So at the moment, this isn't making too much difference. We can see the new height in here. But let's return to, say, the first tab and let's generate, say, 10 paragraphs with some lorem ipsum in. So we've got 10 paragraph tags with some random text in. And that will give us the following. So we can now scroll within this. So it's still quite nice. It, uh, you know, does the job. But when we add a element underneath this, it's still going to have the same effect. So more content. When we refresh, you can see that's coming up there and doesn't look great. So it's going to interfere with the rest of your page content. So what we want to do is we want to use the after pseudo element on the tabs uh, class. So tabs after we want to set the content to nothing. Uh, so this is like an element that uh, exists, but it's a pseudo element. It's not actually on the page as markup. Um, that's basically what a pseudo element is. We want to clear both because remember that we're floating. We want to set this uh, with a display of block so we can give it a height of 240 pixels. Now the reason I'm giving it a height of 240 pixels is because if we look at the height of our content, it's 200. We've also then got a padding of 20 pixels. So that's going to give us enough room for that content to sit underneath. You might want to just adjust things around depending on how you want this to display. It, it's entirely up to you of how you handle this. So now what's going to happen then is you can see that this is sitting, if we just inspect this, sitting nicely under that element because we've given it that 240. We've obviously got a border, so you might want to just increase that height a little bit more. Again, the solution is not ideal, but it uh, will do the trick if uh, you want to add this to a page. And we can actually take a look at this pseudo element. You can see that it's been put in there and you can see it actually is uh, a height of 240. In actual fact, what we should be doing is because we have a border at the top and the bottom, like I just said, this should be 242 to accommodate the size of the uh, borders, which are both one pixel. So if we click on the first element there, you can see that that blue area is 242 pixels, which covers that entire area. So nice and clean. Okay, so the last thing you probably already noticed is when we refresh, we're not seeing a default tab selected. And this is pretty straightforward because when a tab, a radio button, sorry, or a tab has a checked 
state, we show the tab content. So what we can do is we can manually add in the checked attribute to any of these that we want to display by default. So in this case, we're displaying the first tab by default. And you can see that just by adding that checked attribute, we're automatically targeting the state of that element and showing the first uh, content piece here. So when we go ahead and click on each one, it just works as normal. If for some reason you didn't want to show the first one and you wanted to show the second one, all you need to do is add the checked attribute to that and it will show the second one by default and your users can navigate as normal. So that's how we create a pure CSS tab system, getting away from JavaScript and doing this purely with CSS. I've tested this on the latest version of Safari, Firefox, and obviously Chrome, and it works exactly the same. So this may just be a really good solution when you don't want to use JavaScript.